Good afternoon, everyone. I picked up this, uh, I was going to say wind up, but they're not wind up. It's a uh, Dynamo radio, which amusingly is says Ontario Power Generation. For it, it looks like it was a safety recognition thing, although they totally screwed up printing that on here. Like, it's not closed in enough around this. OPG's printed well enough. This is a bit of an amusing giveaway, I guess, for OPG, given o Ontario Power Generation is the large, largest public sector power generator in here in Ontario. Um, manages a bunch of hydro plants and our two nuclear plants. So, yeah, I think the idea was, hey, it generates electricity. That's funny. Um, although I think from a customer point of view, the you felt the need to hand out emergency radios to your employees is a little bit more questionable. Anyway, uh, this one has a uh, conventional bulb, not an LED. Uh, well, you can barely see that in this light. Uh, the radio works. I've tried the Dynamo. It charges fine. So while I've owned one of these before, I don't currently, it went out, um, I've never actually looked inside one and I'm fairly interested in doing so. As I said, this one works fine. It's analog radio, uh, tungsten lamp. So I'm guessing early 2000s for this. Uh, it's more or less perfect except for a few scratches in the back like most things that you get given at work, this probably got tossed in the drawer and, you know, sat there <laughs> until, uh, until you retire and clear out your desk and then take it home and decide you don't really have any use for it. Okay, so I want to have a look inside this and, um, and I'm curious as to what the dynamo in here looks like. And I'm assuming it's just going to be a permanent magnet electric motor of some sort. I can't imagine this more complicated than that. The radio is kind of not interesting to me. I mean, it's just going to be a single chip radio, analog radio um, of one sort or another. So what I'm interested in is the power circuit, and I may have a big Clive moment and attempt to draw the circuit. We'll see. He knows what he's doing, I don't, so how well that might go. Uh, I'm also interested in looking at what the power output looks like from this. And the battery in it does seem to be charging. You know, if I turn, I... So I am able to charge it and use the radio. It also has um, a couple of AAs in the back, and it looks like it takes, uh, it says 3 to 4.5 volts at the top center positive so you could charge it with presumably pretty well any charger you have coming around but it's not clear to me does that charge the internal battery or not so what am i what am i interested in i'm interested in what the battery and charging circuit assuming there is any looks like i mean i'm guessing probably a couple of early 2000s in canada it could be nickel metal hydride but it could also be nickel cadmium batteries that's what I'm guessing is on there. Um, maybe with the diode on the power input. Um, I don't imagine much of a charging circuit on that. And I'm curious as to, as to how this works. Um, my guess is a gearbox and a, you know, just a, a little DC motor essentially. So let's pull out the screws on the back. It looks like they're four. Um, I did have this open, but it's kind of jammed, so. I'm not going to try to force it now, but we have one, two, three, four. We've got arrows, Japanese style. Let's see what we see inside. And there we go. Okay. So here's the battery pack. Can we see what that is? Does it come out? This looks like a little NICAD. Turn that so you can NICAD. Two thirds AA, I didn't even know that was a thing. 450 milliamp hour, 2.4 volts. That's probably actually fine. 
the, uh, there's a gearbox inside here. This is the gearbox. Oh, that's not so good. Anyway, there's a, you can see the, uh, those have been folded over against something. Oh, it's the edge of this. And nearly we eat them through the, the uh, uh, insulation. So I'm correct. This is just looks like a standard DC motor that's on there. And uh, nickel cadmium battery pack, single chip radio. Can we see what the chip is? You're probably not. Let me find our flashlight. You're probably not going to be able to see this, but I can. So it is CD1191CB is the uh, is the radio chip in it. We've got, I won't pull the whole radio circuit out because as I said, I'm not terribly interested in it. But what have we got? We've got a tuning condenser. The uh, antenna must be under here because we can see the wires coming through. There's the chip. One, two, three, four. There's got to be a fifth probably here somewhere. Um, transformers. So in other words, a totally standard one chip radio kind of deal. Um, there's the little light um, with a light bulb connected there. We have a date, 040225, so 2004 maybe? That would be my guess. That sounds reasonable. Certainly before 2010, because it would certainly be LED after 2010. We have another number down here. That's just, yeah, that looks like it's just a, uh, Yeah, it looks like it's a part number on the board down here. Okay, so I have one more thing I'd like to do. I really think that answers most of my questions about it. But let's, uh, let's zoom out here. And I do have a new toy to play with. So we can put this, the, uh, the hand tech seemed like a, the 2D72 seemed like a decent buy for me because it's um, it's compact and I don't really I mean I could find space for a uh, for an oscilloscope up here but not really and it does have some multimeter functions that I don't have on my existing multimeter so I'm just curious as to the voltage on the battery. So two and a half volts. Um, being an ICAD battery, if it's not totally destroyed, it will it will recover. Um, charging circuit. Well, we'd have to take that apart. I don't really feel like taking the board out, so we won't bother with that. The other thing I'm curious as to what the power looks like in here when you turn the. when you turn the crank. So we'll see if I can manage to do this and operate the oscilloscope and, uh, and everything at the same time. So let's, let's see, can we clip this on here? I'm trying to find a good spot. There we go, that should work. And we'll just use that as the ground. As you can see, I'm still learning how to use this little thing. The, I, I'm not, haven't used an oscilloscope since college, so bear with me, but, uh, oops. Why is it set for 50 volts? Channel one. Okay, one volt. 
move. There we go. That should work. All right. So it goes up to about four volts. The switching frequency is right around 450 hertz. So that's going to be the speed at which the commutator in this little motor is switching. It's a fun little example of playing with the oscilloscope and I've just learned quite a bit about the settings just uh, setting it up here. Um, the reality is, is when you're doing something like this that starts and stops, the auto setting mode is not very useful and you'd be best to set the time base as something that's reasonable, which I set to, you know, one millisecond and then, you know, knowing that we're in the volts range, you just set, the, set it for volts and then adjust it from there. But from there you can see quite example, quite what's going on. What's interesting are those little overshoots, and I, that's got to be partly as a result of the swishing. But you can see that it looks essentially like a rectified um, mains voltage. Let me do it again so you can see. I'll go a little slower. See, so you essentially got a curve, 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 curve like rectified mains voltage. And of course, it is being rectified mechanically by the commutation in this little motor. Really quite neat, quite fun. So I'm glad I got the little oscilloscope. It's perfect for this kind of hobbyist use of poking at little things to get see what you can see about them, I guess. Um, also, fun little radio. Um, I won't be drawing any schematics of it because I don't feel like taking out the board entirely. But it gives us a look inside and gives us some idea about what's going on with the uh, with the very basic uh, dynamo. It's not a it's not a it's not an alternator. It's a dynamo that we have here, and we know it's a dynamo because it commutates, right? It doesn't produce AC. It could produce AC. You could just have a winding, no commutator, and then you would use a diode over here to rectify the AC produced by an AC motor. But since they've used an off-the-shelf DC motor, um, it's got brushes, it's got a commutator, so, so that's what they've done. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little look inside a, uh, a very simple um, Dynamo radio from, well, I guess we know it's 2004. Uh, this is, you know, so the first time you'll see the, uh, the handheld oscilloscope from time to time around here. I, I, I think it's a fun toy. I don't know the extent to which this is a useful tool. I think it would be great for automotive work. Like it's absolutely the right size. The battery seems to last a long time on it. I think it would be great for that. Um, is it a replacement for a bench scope? I'm not the person to judge, but for my purpose, it might, it might be. We'll see. My feeling in buying this was that if I buy a bench scope, if I buy a bottom of the line bench scope for, you know, not much more money than this, I might regret it and then end up upgrading later on. Whereas this, if I do upgrade to a proper bench scope at some point. This is still a useful, a useful device for other purposes. It's nice to have something that's battery powered. Um, it's better for working on electronics where you might be concerned about the grounds like, you know, tube radios, which I don't work on, but um, you know, if I ever get into that, then this would be more useful for that than where you have to worry about isolation and all that. Okay, well, thanks for looking at my little video, and I will uh, look forward, hopefully, to seeing you again. Thanks.